So today, let me just organize stuff here. There we go. So what I'm gonna do today, we are going to be using one of the brand new decoupage papers that came out last week. And this is the neutral Christmas blocks. So I've already cut it in half just to make my life a little bit easier and so you guys don't have to watch me cut a piece of paper in half. So I'm not gonna be using the polar bear. I am going to be using this half. So I'm just gonna kinda place that on there. Okay, so first I'm gonna paint this white and I am going to use um, DIY paint in white swan. This is kind of my go-to because the coverage is so good and um, I use this underneath decoupage all the time. So, and I'm just gonna squirt it on here. Saves me from dirtying a dish when I don't need to. And hopefully I don't make a big mess. So I'm also planning to use Roy Cycled's, um, the Christmas stencil from last year called Winter. So we'll see how that goes, but that is my plan. So I'm just gonna spritz this with a little bit of water so it flows a little bit better. DIY paint is very, very thick. And sometimes spritzing it with water just helps it move a little bit easier. So now let's give this a quick dry with the heat tool. I'm excited to use these new papers. I used part of the, the winter blocks, the owl yesterday on another board like this. And I used that one in the snow globe stencil. Um, I made this project yesterday. So those ones with the winter blocks, they fit inside the snow globe stencil perfectly. So that's gonna make a lot of fun projects. My favorite out of that one is the Raven. I can hardly wait to use him. Okay. Get this guy out of my way. Sorry about my squeaky chair. All right. So now this is good to go. And I want to decoupage this on here. And I'm not gonna bother cutting it out. I'm gonna ha place it just kinda, kinda centered. I'm kinda centering, you guys can't really see that up there. We've got this little natural spot to center over that hole. So I'm gonna kinda do that. Now I need, put that guy in water, grab my other one. I always have two of these Klingon brushes on rotation. They're my favorite brushes and I use them all the time. Okay, I'm just gonna mist this a little bit to make this a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna fold this up and just get a start here. So I'm using DIY Paints Clear Patina as a decoupage medium. It's pretty much my go-to, um, my favorite one to use. But I think you, we all get our favorite decoupage mediums, which one we like the best. Okay. Trying to keep this relatively not crinkled. There we go. 
This is why I need this silicone mat, because I make a mess. I grab my little piece of saran wrap, kind of smooth this out as I go. Perfect. This is my favorite method of smoothing out decoupage is using just this balled up piece of food wrap. Um, I've tried the little, like the vinyl pushers with the, with the felt on them. Um, they work, but I feel like I have more control with this. So I kind of, I like it. It's my favorite. Okay. And now we're drying again. I think this paper is going to make a really nice, kind of backdrop. I'm planning on using this stencil, both this one and the snowflakes. Okay, so now I just take, I have this old sanding block and I just use this to clean these edges. So hopefully this isn't too noisy. just straight down so that you don't want to go this way because it could tear your paper and you do also want to make sure it's really dry otherwise it'll just tear your paper okay so I'm gonna save these because I never throw decoupage paper away, and these are the perfect size to fit on little tags or something like that, so I never throw my scraps away. I have a drawer full of scraps because they come in handy. I'm loving this silicone mat. No more shriveled up brown paper from getting wet. Okay, I'm going to dry this a little bit more. It still feels kind of damp. And I don't want, I don't want to wreck it. Okay, so this is Royce's stencil called Winter. This was from, this came out last year. So I am going to use, because I think this little scene fits in perfectly with this paper. And I thought it would be kind of cute just to have a little bit of that layered, I like, I like layering stuff, so decoupage and stamps and transfers and the paint inlays and stuff. I'm always layering a bunch of things um, together. So in this case, I'm wanting to use this stencil right here. So, but my evil plan is I'm going to mix some inks. So I've got the IOD inks and I've got the stone gray, the mixing white and the china blue. And I'm kind of going to mix my own blend and use that because I thought, well, the black is going to be too harsh. It's going to stand out too much. It's going to be too bold. So I'm just going to mix my own colors. So this is an experiment. So if this is an epic fail, well, that happens sometimes. Okay, so this is my gray and for some reason, I don't have a top, the little spout. So hopefully I don't make a mess. And I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add, actually I'm gonna shake this up a lot better than that. So I'll just put a couple drops in there, four or five, I didn't really count. 
And let's stir that up and see what we have. That made it a lot lighter. Maybe I put too much white. So let's add some more gray. Ooh, a lot more gray. All right, let's commit. So I'm gonna put this little guy down here. I haven't done a lot of stenciling. Stenciling's been a hard one for me. So I'm trying to use them more because of course, if you don't use the products, you're not going to get better at them, right? Okay, I just want to peek. It's kind of juicy. I thought that was going to be kind of juicy. I wonder if I'm going to be able to rescue that. Put that on there. The trick is to not use too much, like I just did. Because if you use too much medium, whether that's ink or paint, it will migrate underneath your stencil, unless you're using um, like a sticky stencil. So that's pretty subtle, but it's a good base. So now I'm going to want to, I'm going to kind of wipe this off a little bit. And I'm going to put it back. Actually, I'm going to dry this a little bit so I don't make it worse. Okay. It's not dry, but so now let's get this back on there. So I'm just going to hit these little kind of snowflakes first. And little bits on the snow. So there's that little bit then of the blue in there. So the good thing um, with these inks is they pretty much have the primary colors so you can kind of mix any any color you want now. So I'm just adding a little bit of green on the trees. Okay. So there's a little, kind of a subtle little scene in the bottom. I'm not super concerned about this getting, being complete coverage. I just want to kind of get the gist of them. Kind of the essence of the snowflakes, if that makes any sense. Just to give it that variation. If that works. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So on this little piece, I really like the snowflakes. I don't know if I really like this part. You might see this changed up here with like a piece of transfer or inlay or an extra piece of decoupage because I don't know if I'm loving this bit. You know, this bit that I spent the most time on, but that's usually how things work with me. I just keep fixing it until I like it. And I'm not sure if I like that part. I do really like the rest of it though. Okay, so I'm here for take two of this board because I didn't like this part. I didn't like how this ended up looking. So I wanted to redo that or just 
add to it. And I was originally going to either decoupage over it or I wanted to um, put a transfer or something. But then I decided I still like this, I still like this stencil. I just, I just didn't do it right. I didn't use the right colors. So I'm going to go over this. I'm going to add it, put it right back on here. And I'm going to go over it with darker colors. And I think I'm going to use paint this time. DIY paint. Just because I feel like I have a little bit more um, control. So this is weathered wood. I just have a little wee bit left in this. A nice dark kind of gray brown. And I think it's going to work really good. So I'm just going to use this one. Just make sure that's lined up properly. Let's just take a peek there. That brought them out quite a bit more. So I like that. Go a little bit darker. That's already made a big difference. Okay, so, so far this is winning. Um, I need a green. So this is DIY's Gypsy Green. This is a really nice mossy kind of green. And I think it's going to work well for these trees. I don't really want to get the green on the deer. There we go. That's adding. You can actually see it a little bit better. It's still a little bit. Hidden over here. So I'm going to take some more of that weathered wood. And put it over. I'm going to grab a little bit more. Just to kind of get little bit more opaque. There we go. That's better. Now it's starting to come together. A little bit of green. Actually, I'm going to dry that a bit. So I don't want to move my stencil. So I'm just going to go really, I'm going to use this heat tool because it's a little more gentle than my big one I usually use. Because I don't want this, I want it to kind of layer. I don't want it to blend. Okay. A little bit more green. There we go. That's looking way better. Okay, so now I need some white because I want to add to the snow. And I'm going to need some blue. So I'm just going to grab 
Hey Sailor because I have it handy even though it's a darker blue. I always try to take these little caps off without squirting paint all over myself. I'm just going to add a little bit there because I can mix the two together. And I'm just going to use this tiny little one, little brush. I'm going to give this a quick dry again first. Actually, I'm going to take this off, so I'm scared I'm going to wreck that. See how that's already popping a little bit better? So I'm just kind of thinking. I'm just going to shift this up just a smidge. And then I'm going to put white in these voids in the stencil to add snow. We'll see if this works. I'm using this tiny wee brush because I don't want to cover up all of the green and the brown that I've already put on here. I want to kind of pinpoint a little bit more on where I want to apply this white. That looks way better. I'll zoom in in a, in a bit here. Now I want to mix a little bit of the blue. just for on kind of snowy spots. Okay, now I'm going to shift this down again to where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to go with this kind of blue And kind of hit the bottoms here. So see how different that looks now just with some added added color. I'm just starting to work with stencils a little bit more because I want them I want them to end up looking better when I'm done with them. So I'm trying to kind of make it look less stencils, kind of fill in some stuff. Just to kind of And I'm fixing where I kind of went over here. And because I went, this is pretty lightly. That didn't even make any sense. It's pretty translucent where I've gone with the stencil. So being able to add some, some shading and whatnot here is actually helping fill it in, give it a little bit more of that, a little bit more of a realistic look. I really like this one. I like this winter one. The winter stencil by Recycled. I like the this little These two are my favorites. But I could see this working really well, both of these ones too, but these two on this sheet are my favorite. So I'm just going to go with this tiny little brush and kind of sort of fill in some spots here. So 
So it's still kind of looking like a silhouette. But it definitely stands out a lot more now than it did, which I'm liking. I'm liking this a lot more, a lot more. me a little bit darker down here at their little hooves. Trying to keep the where shadows would be. Trying to grab some white there without. Okay. Well, I like that a whole a whole lot better than before. So the trees actually stand out a little bit more and the snow. I think the snow can use a little bit more white actually. So it's not so, so bamishly blue. That's gonna take the stencil again. So let's Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so now I like that a lot better. Okay, I'm gonna seal this again now before I accidentally smear this. So I'm just gonna go over it again with clear patina as a sealer. So the thing with DIY paint and stenciling is this whole swipe method. You just want to get that cover of the, the clear coat on there. You don't want to mess with it too much. I'm going really lightly over it to get the excess off. Because the moisture in this clear coat will reactivate that paint and then you will smear your stencil. So it's kind of a little trick when you're dealing with a paint that reactivates like that. I think there is a few brands of a clay-based or chalk style paint that does that. So once you just get that trick figured out, it's, it's super easy workaround. Not something you have to worry about too much. Okay, so let's dry this. 
And then I just kind of want to warm up these edges a little bit with a uh, ink. Kind of like that halo effect, a little bit of a vignette effect. But if I seal this first, then I won't make a mess. Okay. So I bought these. IOD ink does not have a brown and I haven't gone into the mixing thing and made myself a good brown. So I bought these. These are um, Ranger inks and this was kind of, I forget what the collection was called, but they came with these four. So ground espresso, dried marigold, rusty hinge and tea dye. So I'm going with the ground espresso because it's, to me, it looks like a really nice, a really nice brown. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like that one. I've never used these before, so this is a whole new experiment. I probably shouldn't be experimenting on this, but why not? Oh, I like that actually. I'm just going to rub it on the edge. It's kind of hard. There's too much pad around this to be able to go around that curve. Like how just rubbing it on here is giving me kind of that weathered rusticy look. Y'all know I like the whole rusticy rough look. Well, this works better. done this in the first place. I was a little bit leery about using the brown color with this paper, but I think it kind of, it's working. I think it's working. What do you guys think? I'm just going to add some to this guy. Why not, right? Add a little bit of that very faint, that kind of brown tone in there. I think he could pull it off. There. Okay, so now I'm liking this way better. So sometimes 
I know with me, um, I sometimes will even, I will do a project and I'll really like the project and I'll film it and I'll either do it live or I'm doing it specifically as a tutorial and I like it. When I'm done, I like it. I think it's great. And then I look at it at, um, I look back at it and I don't like it. When I look back at the video, I'm thinking, why did I do that? What was I thinking? That's crazy. That was so unnecessary. So, which is basically, I didn't love this yesterday when I finished it. I, I liked everything but this little patch down here. I didn't like how that worked out. And when you're doing a video live, you kind of like there was there was time constraints. I had I had people lined up behind me for the decoupage marathon, the Christmas in July. So I didn't want to impede on somebody else's time either. So I kind of felt like, well, I'm just going to leave it. I don't like it, but I'm just going to leave it and I'll come back and I'll work on it another time. So that's where I'm at. So I like it now much better. The good thing about when you're creating is that it's never done until it's done. It's never done until you think it's done. If you create something and you don't like it, don't give up. Just maybe sleep on it, um, give it a night, give it a week, and come back at it and give it a second go because then you come back at it with fresh eyes and a whole new perspective basically and you can try again. And maybe sometimes without the pressure of doing it live um, in front of a bunch of people. Because sometimes that adds a lot of pressure. And I know with me, I get nervous and then I kind of freak out and, and things go sideways and then it just kind of snowballs from there. But I fixed it. So I like it now. I really like how this turned out now.